to welcome you, Honourable Prime Minister, sir, by presenting you with a small memento, and I request the Chairman of the Organising Committee of the Commonwealth Attorneys and Solicitors General Conference 2024 and the Attorney General for India, Dr. R. Venkataramani, to please do so now. May I now request the conference chair and president of the Commonwealth Legal Education Association, senior professor at the Indian Law Institute, Professor Dr. S. Sivakumar, to please welcome our esteemed delegates and guests. Our chief guest, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji, Honorable Dr. Justice D.Y. Chandrajur, Chief Justice of India, dignitaries on the dais and of the dais. I extend a warm welcome and express gratitude to Honorable Prime Minister for accepting our invitation. The Commonwealth Legal Education Association, inspired by the Prime Minister's vision for G20, is hosting this gathering of Commonwealth attorneys, solicitors, and legal professionals. Aligned with the G20 theme of Vasudeva Kudumbagam, or One Earth, One Family, One Future, we aim to promote just and equitable global growth. This conference echoes the G20 message, and I confident that it will contribute to the ideals. Once again, a heartfelt welcome to our honorable Prime Minister. Honorable Dr. Justice D.Y. Chandrajur, Chief Justice of India, is praised for his dedication and legal acumen. We welcome you, Lordship. I extend warm welcome to our Chief Patron, Honorable Justice Surya Khan, Judge Supreme Court of India, Honorable Law Minister for Law and Justice, uh, Sri Arjun Ram Magawal. Dr. R. Pengitrimani, Leonard Attorney General, Mr. Tushar Mehta, Leonard Solicitor General, in whose guidance we are organizing this event. We are honored to have attorneys and solicitors from diverse Commonwealth nations gathered at this flagship event. This is the first initiative globally, symbolizing a shared commitment to justice and legal collaboration. Let's learn, inspire change, and contribute collectively to the global justice advancement. Once again, welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shivakumar. May I now invite the co-chair of the organizing committee and the Solicitor General of India, Sri Tushar Mehta, to make the introductory remarks. Good morning to every one of you. Respected Sri Narendra Modi ji, the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Dr. Justice D.Y. Chandrachut, Honorable Chief Justice of India, my Lord Justice Surya Khan, Senior Judge, Supreme Court of India, the dignitaries on the dais, the Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court of India, the Chief Justices of High Courts, and other Honorable Judges, my colleague, Attorney Generals and Solicitor Generals who have come all the way from Commonwealth countries, Advocate Generals of various states, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the organizing committee and on my behalf, I welcome all of you to one of its kind conferences which would specifically address the most relevant issue facing the world today, that is cross-border challenges in justice administration. There are certain legal issues which no longer remain within the geographical bounds of one country or few countries and take a global shape. They transcend geographical borders and therefore it is very difficult to deal with some of the offenses without cooperation amongst different countries. Friends, under the visionary leadership of our beloved Prime Minister, 
Shri Modi ji, our country has become one of the fastest growing economy in the world and will soon become one of the first three major economy, economic powers under the visionary leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister. With the development on the economic front and all other fronts taking place simultaneously, the legal challenges have also increased manifold. The subject of this conference cannot therefore be more apt and more relevant. We shall have to consider jointly our respective legal frameworks and justice delivery administration so as to ensure that cross-border challenges in justice delivery system is addressed while keeping in tune with our respective constitutional goals and limitations. India is a signatory of Vienna Convention, the Palermo Convention and all other conventions and is also a member of Financial Action Task Force. India is committed to deal with several global legal challenges for which we shall have to have mutual legal assistance and sufficient legislative framework so that we can tackle and deal with certain global challenges together. Friends, India is a land of opportunities and all of you are here to see that for yourself. Let the emerging India's economic scenario be the guiding light of today's discussion and brainstorming. I welcome you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. May I now request the Chairman of the Organizing Committee of the Commonwealth Attorneys and Solicitors General Conference and the Attorney General for India, Dr. R. Venkataramani, to please address the Assembly. Honorable the Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi Ji, Honorable the Chief Justice of India, Honorable Justice Surya Khan, Honorable Minister for Law and Justice, my dear colleague, Sushar Mehta Leonard, Solicitor General, the wonderful congregation of judges of Supreme Court and High Courts, academicians, heads of law schools and institutions, the youthful array of students from across the country. On your behalf, let me welcome our loving guests from abroad, including Honorable Judges from Australia, Bangladesh, Malaysia, Singapore, and Sri Lanka, who have traveled long distances to be with us for the next three days. The chilly winter has been made warm by the light, bright presence of each one of you. I personally thank each one of our guests for having gracefully accepted the invitation to be part of a great sharing congregation and a lasting journey ahead. I thank the Honorable Prime Minister for being with us today in the midst of his endless queues of schedules, his continuous engagement in the quest for enhancement of justice administration will always be with us. I sincerely thank the warm and vibrant presence of the Honorable the Chief Justice of India, who has, who has only one commitment in life, and that is the task of doing complete justice to administration of justice. Indian worldview has always been inclusive. Endeavors like today's conference are to continue on the same voyage of inclusiveness and celebrating diversity. Justice needs and demands of people of all nations are changing. We are moving into a world of sharing as against the world of control and hegemony. We now read, write, talk, and debate about enriching a free world where all peoples will carry liberty and rule of law in their hearts and democracy and peace in their sleeves. From a world drowned in dividing ideological clashes, we have moved towards a meltdown of ideologies. We are called upon to design and devise ideas and measures to unflinchingly stand by equal regard for all, transcending the fence of religion, faith, and other dividing identities. All these demand that we constantly refashion our democratic institutions, our governance institutions, and our judicial institutions. All these demand that we are always on the vigil against the emergence of newer forms of hegemony and control by any country or by any people or even by economic forces. Colonialism has both enslaved and also planted ideas of freedom and transplantation of legal systems. 
The amalgamation and mergers of legal systems and justice ideas are now our common heritage. The emerging frontiers of technology are like new mind and culture colonizations. They are enabling in as much as they connect and unite all of us. We are here today in many connected ways because of technology. They are challenging in as much as they opened up new doors and windows of control and misuse. In the midst of all this, the old idea of Commonwealth with colonial roots has transformed itself. The Association of Commonwealth Nations is blossoming in new ways. We have the Commonwealth Lawyers Association, the Commonwealth Law Reforms Commission. One missing link, I thought, is a legal education collaboration and its contemporary connection to our exchanges in trade, commerce, and dispute resolution concerns. There has been no concerted effort in the exchange of ideas in the field of legal education among Commonwealth countries. The experiments India has made in the field of legal education are valuable lessons. The study of the scope for Commonwealth justice education framework as a fair model is an exciting invitation. This future Commonwealth framework can aspire to be a global standard. India should act as a great stimulant. While there are efforts to establish international legal standards in areas like human rights and trade, the absence of relevant regional or universal legal courts has left a vacuum and uncertainties in cross-border justice delivery, and thus needs, meets challenges in ensuring consistent justice across borders. The digital nature of many contemporary crimes such as cybercrime and an online fraud, poses challenges in investigation and prosecutions across borders. Our legal education programs may like to have special chapters on these matters. The lack of consistent international regulations in, relations, in relation to emerging technologies adds to complexity to cross-border legal responses and dispute resolutions. It is time for a Commonwealth legal exchange platform and Commonwealth Legal Exchanges Convention to begin to address these concerns and to transform the fundamentals of legal education. Today's assembly is symbolically a New Delhi Convention. The idea of all of us being together under the umbrella of the Commonwealth Legal Education Association is to debate how to move into changing the landscapes of legal education into justice education. Addressing the needs of the justice needs of different sections of our communities, addressing the needs of cross-border justice and legal exchanges on an equal regard basis. We need to create and sustain important platforms for such exchanges. This beginning today is a humble hope for enduring relationships and connections. At the bottom of it all is the bondage of our cultures and values, distinct and special, but universal. I welcome each one of you once again. Thank you, sir. May I now request the Honorable Minister of State with Independent Charge for Law and Justice, Government of India, Sri Arjun Ram Medwal, to please address the August gathering. Today, on the occasion, today on this occasion, uh, sitting on the dais, the most popular leader of the world, Yug Naik, Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi Ji, Honorable Chief Justice of India, Justice Dr. D. Y. Chandra Sud Saab, Honorable Justice Surya Kant Ji, Judge Supreme Court of India, and Chief Patron of CLEA, Attorney General of India, Dr. R. Venkatraman Ji, Solicitor General of India, Sri Tusar Mehta Ji, President CLEA and Senior Professor, Indian Law Institute, Professor S. Shiv Kumar Ji, Honorable Former and Present Judges of the Supreme Court, Chief Justice of the Different High Court, Attorneys and Solicitor General from the Commonwealth countries, Advocate Generals of all states, other distinguished limonaries, scholars, students, friends from media, and ladies and gentlemen, 
a very good morning to all of you. It is an honor for me to address this distinguished gathering of the Commonwealth Attorney and Solicitor General Conference 2024 on cross-border challenges in justice delivery with the motto of From Vision to Action, Shaping the Future of Legal Education and Justice Delivery in the Commonwealth Nations. I extend my sincere appreciations to the Commonwealth Legal Education Associations for partnering in organizing this significant conference. India is a mother of democracy and the largest member states of the Commonwealth having nearly 60% population of the association. Proudly welcomes all the valued dignitaries to this prestigious conference. This conference is a momentum to reflect upon the evolved role of attorneys and solicitor generals in the larger arena of good governance, architecture, and their purposeful role in the upcoming future. The timelines for institutionalizations of the post of attorney general and solicitor generals may vary among the member states of the Commonwealth, but the historically perspective gives us valuable insights into the advisory role of this paternity their invaluable suggestions and wisdom have helped to simplify the sophistications leading to better decision making to facilitate rule of law for the leaders at the helm of affairs. In India also, the wisdom of the founding fathers of the constitutions has designated the Attorney General as a constitutional post. He is the highest law officer and chief legal advisor in the country. Once Baba Sahib Dr. B. R. Ambedkar said, I am far enough to say civilization cannot exist without advocate. Law is very foundation of civilization. I would like to add that being at the intersection of the diverse legal, political, constitutional functions, the attorneys and solicitors general are responsible stakeholders of the governance paradigms. Their single opinion has dramatic potential to bring effectiveness and purpose to national and international affairs. Today, in the technologically connected world, we are living in a global village. The global challenges of the day require global solutions through the coordinated efforts of all stakeholders. I am happy to note that this conference is addressing diverse yet interrelated ranges of issues that include the judiciary and justice system, legal education, and global legal challenges. Technology has emerged as a big enabler for digitally empowering society. India has showcased testimony to it as it has marched ahead with the commencement of a citizen-centering technology-driven modern system, modern legal system. Telelo, Nyay Setu, phase three of e-court project are transforming the judiciary by setting up digital paperless and smart courts. It has emerged as a global leader by conducting over three crore judicial proceedings through video conferencing. The nation has leapt forward to becoming Viksit Bharat by 2047. The Ministry of Law and Justice is religiously aiming to achieve justice for all through the speedy, affordable, and technology-enabled citizen-centering doorstep justice delivery system. I feel that the outcome, this con outcome of this conference will not merely help to address the cross-border challenges in justice delivery, but also facilitate to rooting out the meanings of climate change, global warming, 
terrorism, drug and human trafficking, cyber crimes, and extremism, among others. The course correction in the justice delivery system has resonance in uh, every sphere of human life. The whole world has sensed and felt fragrance of time-tested cultural values of Vasudev Kutamakam resonated during the successful G20 presidency hosted by India based on the theme of One Earth, One Family and One Future. In conclusion, I would say that the dialogue, diplomacy and aligned collective action are ways forward for amicably resolving the challenges and facilitating a better world for the upcoming generations. I am hopeful that this conference will become an instrument to take collective action by qualitatively shaping our dialogues and nurturing the diplomacy to build a just society, promoting peace, prosperity and welfare of entire community. Jai Bharat! Thank you, sir. May I now invite the Chief Patron and Judge of the Supreme Court of India, Honorable Justice, Mr. Surya Kant, to please address the conference. Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi Ji, Honorable Chief Justice of India, Dr. Justice D. Y. Chandrasur, my esteemed brother and sister judges from the Supreme Court of India, Honorable Minister of Law and Justice, Sri Arjun Ram Meghwalji, Learned Attorney General for India, Dr. R. Venkatramani, Learned Solicitor General of India, Mr. Tusar Mehta, Honorable judges from the Federal Court of Malaysia, Federal Court of Australia, Supreme Court of Bangladesh, Supreme Court of Sri Lanka, Chief Justices and judges from different High Courts, Learned Attorney Generals, Solicitor General, and Law Officers from various Commonwealth jurisdictions. Professor Dr. S. Shiva Kumar, President, Commonwealth Legal Education Association. Senior Advocates and Members of the Supreme Court Bar Association, Learned Vice Chancellors, Juries, Academicians, Delegates, Representatives, Distinguished Guests, Advocate Generals, and other Law Officers of the State Governments, and my dear Law Students. It's my proud privilege to welcome all the esteemed dignitaries gathered here today for gracing the Commonwealth Attorneys and Solicitor General Conference 2024. Their presence and unwavering support of this August gathering has added immeasurable value to the success of this momentous occasion. I extend my heartiest congratulations to Learned Attorney General for India, Solicitor General of India and the Commonwealth Legal Education Association for this collaborative initiative and for having organized this event so seamlessly. The Commonwealth Legal Education Association, which I represent as its chief patron, stands as a beacon for advancing high standards of legal education. It is committed to socially relevant and professionally impactful legal education by fostering the development of legal curriculum, supporting law schools in preparing for the evolving professional demands, and promoting continuing legal education the association contributes to the overarching goal of enhancing legal practices within the Commonwealth. The theme of 2024 conference is cross-border challenges in justice delivery, which addresses the complexities of our interconnected world. It allows us to navigate the intricate legal landscapes that transcend national boundaries. This conference will be an illustrious platform for diverse state, uh, stakeholders within the Commonwealth to realize the importance of collective wisdom and inclusivity. In light of our shared history and the subsequent trajectory of our development, we must unite collaboratively, jointly hand to traverse the journey of progress together. India stands proudly at the forefront, embodying a commitment to shaping the discussions and outcome of this significant event through its rich legal heritage. This conference aims at bringing together legal luminaries, scholars and practitioners in an effort to translate visionary ideals into tangible actions. 
Its true significance lies in encouraging substantive discussions on pressing legal issues, promoting mutual understanding of legal mechanisms in the Commonwealth nations, and strategically charting the path forward for the evolution of legal education and justice systems. The presence of outstanding jurists from 30 jurisdictions also represents a unique opportunity to synthesize diverse perspectives and thus becoming a catalyst for transformative change within the Commonwealth legal domain. The motto of the conference, From Vision to Action, Shaping the Future of Legal Education and Just Delivery in the Commonwealth Nations, captures the very ethos of the event and highlights its role in tracing the course of legal education and justice delivery within the Commonwealth and beyond. It reflects the proactive stance of the conference, emphasizing actionable strategies. It also underscores the commitment of the Commonwealth nations to spearhead legal innovation, adopt to evolving challenges and build a future where legal education is robust, justice is accessible as well as affordable, and the rule of law prevails. The four technical sessions which lead us to deliberate on the complex correlation between legislative structure and the administration of justice. The topic, legal framework and advocacy in justice delivery, will highlight the need for harmonizing legislative contours while recognizing the interplay that influences the very fabric of justice. The session on judiciary and justice in a changing world prompts us to ponder on the dynamic shifts in the role of judiciary in this ever-evolving world. The judiciary has never been static. It is a living, breathing entity in transition. Breezing the divide in access to justice becomes paramount when we address the disparities that persist in our pursuit of a more equitable legal system. Our focus is to understand these challenges and resolve solutions for strengthening a judiciary that mirrors the values of justice, accessibility, and fairness. Our discussion on global legal challenges and institutional resilience will focus on the cross-border challenges in the justice delivery system. Tackling transnational crimes and enhancing institutional capacities become imperative aspects of our discourse. These deliberations will certainly fortify our institutions, enhance their adaptability, and craft strategies that transcend borders in our pursuit to a more just and secure world. In the last and perhaps the most crucial session would be transporting legal education for the future, a road map, which propels us into the future, envisioning the transformation and reimagination of legal education, contemplating its role in molding the future of our profession. Rethinking legal education is not an empty exercise, but is a vision statement. It is a strategic guide that would fashion future generations of legal practitioners. This discourse is not only to understand the challenges, but to actively contribute to the evolution of legal education, which is coherent within the framework of 21st century. I firmly believe that the technical sessions will extend beyond dialogue and serve as grounds for inspiration, innovation, and commitment. Through our shared insights, experiences, and solutions, we will surely compose a new legal regime towards a unified legal mechanism that stands poised for the glimmering future. Our challenges are formidable, but so is our spirit. Together, we will strive to create a future where justice knows no boundaries, legal education transforms minds, and our institutions stand resilient in the face of global challenges. Let our discussion be insightful, collaborations fruitful, and our collective journey lead the way for an equitable and effective global justice system. I wish you all enriching deliberations, insightful interactions, and a conference that leaves an enduring mark on the landscape of justice delivery. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. May I now request the Chief Justice of India, Honorable Justice Dr. D.Y. Chandrachur, to please address the conference. Namaskar, Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji, Union Minister for Law and Justice Shri Arjun Ram Mekwal, my very distinguished colleague Justice Surya Khan, uh, 
the Attorney General Shri Venkatramani, the Solicitor General Shri Tushar Mehta, Dr. Shivakumar, President CLEA, Attorneys General, Solicitors General from the Commonwealth countries, visiting judges, vice chancellors, professors from law schools and students. I extend my sincere gratitude to the Office of the Attorneys General and Solicitors General of India, the Union Ministry of Law and Justice, and the Commonwealth Legal Education Association for organizing this conference of immense promise and relevance. As we convene here today and interact with persons of the legal fraternity from across various countries, particularly from the Global South, we see numerous similarities and differences. But we are all bound together by a shared commitment to the pursuit of justice. The aim of this conference strikes at the heart of our collective endeavor to foster collaboration between officers of the court entrusted with the responsibility of justice administration. In today's rapidly evolving world, characterized by an array of pressing issues, the need to fortify institutional capacity is more urgent than ever before. This event is not merely a congregation of legal minds. It is a strategic alliance, a noble endeavor towards a more just legal system globally. As the inaugural speaker, I'm compelled to underscore the significance of global collaboration and trust building in addressing the diverse cross-border challenges to justice delivery. The Sustainable Development Goals serve as a universal call to action to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure prosperity for all. These goals resonate deeply with our core constitutional principles of justice, equality, and human rights. These goals are not specific to just India. They are an intrinsic part of our legal systems. But achieving these goals requires collective action on a global scale. By fostering partnerships and sharing best practices, we can amplify our impact and pave the way for a more sustainable future. The legal community plays a crucial role in translating these goals into action by utilizing its expertise to navigate the complexities of law and governance and ensuring that justice and sustainability go hand in hand. One crucial aspect of shaping this future lies in the realm of legal education. Globally, we are witnessing a paradigm shift from textbook-oriented teaching methods towards a more practical-based approach to legal education. While traditional legal education has focused primarily on theoretical knowledge, there's a growing recognition of the importance of practical skills in preparing students to the realities of legal practice. Law schools are increasingly incorporated experiential learning opportunities, such as moot court competitions and internships into their curriculum. These initiatives provide students with a hands-on experience and real-world insights equipping them better to navigate the complexities of legal practice. This is reflected in the countless international moot court competitions which are conducted by various colleges in different parts of the world, including India. Moreover, the emerging trends in legal education, such as the integration of technology and interdisciplinary studies, offer exciting opportunities for innovation and collaboration. However, as we strive to modernize legal education, we must also confront the question of equitable access to legal education. Entrance tests for admission to law schools must not be exclusionary of the socially marginalized. We must ensure that our admissions processes are fair, transparent, and inclusive. This necessitates a holistic approach towards admission and recruitment that considers not only academic performance, but also factors such as socioeconomic background, diversity, and life experiences. Courts not only refer to the jurisprudence evolved by courts of other jurisdictions while deciding questions of constitutional importance, but also refer to the best practices on the administrative side. In the past year, the Supreme Court of India has hosted members of the E-Committee of the UK, UK courts and judges of countries across the world, belonging particularly to the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SEO countries, where we discuss the best practices for the administration of justice. Our interactions range from discussions on the interface of technology and justice delivery mechanisms, and the presence or absence of statutory timelines for pronouncement of judgments once they are reserved by judges. I remember 
that when I drafted the white paper on reforms to the clerkship recruitment process in 2021 of the Supreme Court, before I took over as Chief Justice of India, my team of judicial law clerks and I studied the process of recruitment of law clerks in various jurisdictions. We identified the best practices in various countries and proposed a reform of the process which would ensure equality and increase diversity of applicants. At this conference, focused on law officers, it is pertinent to consider their pivotal role in upholding the ethics in legal practice. Law officers serve as a primary point of contact between the courts and the government, representing not only the government as an institution, but also the various departments and officials within it. The Attorney General and the Advocates General are posts envisaged under our Constitution. Several other law officers also represent the Union and the states, including the Solicitor General, Additional Solicitor General, Additional Advocates General for the states. The Supreme Court has repeatedly emphasized that law officers and professionals should not only assist the administration of justice, but also uphold the honor of the legal profession through exemplary conduct from both within and outside the courtroom. Ethics in legal practice encompass a wide range of principles, such as offering valuable insights into decision-making. Virtue ethics, for instance, underscores the importance of cultivating moral character and pursuing excellence in every aspect of legal work. In the context of the legal profession, this translates into a commitment to integrity, honesty, and professionalism in all endeavors. A crucial aspect of executive accountability rests on the ethical conduct and responsibility of law officers, who function not only as representatives of the government, but also as officers of the court. The eminent jurist, Nani Palkiwala, wrote to Mr. Soli Sorabji on his appointment as Attorney General for India, and he said, the greatest glory of the Attorney General is not to win cases for the government, but to ensure that justice is done to the people. Law officers bear a greater responsibility in upholding ethical standards compared to private practitioners, given their role as guardians of the rule of law. An exemplary figure in this regard is the late Soli Sorabji, a former Attorney General, who during his tenure demonstrated a commitment to justice by advising the union when it lacked a valid legal case. It is imperative that law officers remain impervious to the polity of the day and conduct themselves with dignity in court, ensuring the integrity of legal proceedings. Simultaneously, we need to recognize the significance of cultivating a shared commitment to justice. Recent initiatives of the Supreme Court of India such as the implementation of a standard operating procedure, SOP, guiding courts in summoning government officials, underscores the laying down of guidelines in this regard. This ensures a smooth code of ethics is formulated by judges in summoning government officials, and they are not summoned arbitrarily. The SOP emphasizes the imperative of treating government officials with dignity and respect in courts, discouraging disparaging remarks based on appearance or attire, unless there is a violation of the dress code. Importantly, it cautions against leveraging the power to summon officials as a tool to pressurize the government, emphasizing that such actions should be reserved for circumstances crucial to the administration of justice. This collaborative approach involving legal officers, government officials, and the judiciary reinforces the ethical underpinnings of executive accountability while fostering culture of mutual respect and cooperation within the justice system. Finally, as we stand at the intersection of tradition and innovation, technology emerges as a powerful force for justice. While it promises to enhance the speed and accessibility of justice, we must navigate carefully. The deep-seated deep structural and financial hierarchies within our societies in the global south demand consideration to ensure that technology does not inadvertently precipitate existing problems. Modernizing courtrooms and facilities is as crucial as bolstering overall infrastructure, ensuring that technology serves to enhance transparency and accountability and not to perpetuate opacity and inequality. Technology should bring about a transformation, not just automation. Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, 
the architect of the Indian constitutions, inside that law and order are the medicine of the body politic. And when the body politic gets sick, medicine must be administered. This underscores the importance of thoughtful administration, especially when introducing technological innovations in the legal system. The eCourts project, for instance, aims to leverage technology to improve access to justice for all citizens. However, we must ensure that technological solutions are designed keeping in mind equity and inclusivity, taking into account the diverse needs and capabilities of all our stakeholders. In closing, let us embrace the challenges before us with optimism and resolve. Together, we can forge a future where justice knows no bounds and where the rule of law reigns supreme. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you, Honorable Justice, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have the privilege of hearing the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, share his thoughts. Distinguished legal luminaries, guests from various nations across the world, and members of the esteemed audience, my greetings to all of you. Friends, it is a pleasure to inaugurate this conference. I'm happy that leading legal minds from across the world are here. On behalf of 1.4 billion Indians, I welcome all our international guests. I urge you all to experience incredible India to the fullest. Friends, I'm told that there are many friends from Africa here. India has a special relationship with the African Union. We are proud that the African Union became a part of the G20 during India's presidency. This will go a long way in addressing the aspirations of the people of Africa. Friends, in the last few months, I have interacted with the legal fraternity on many occasions. A few days ago, I was at the celebration of 75 years of the Supreme Court of India. Last September, in this very location, I came to the International Lawyers Conference. Such interactions help us appreciate the work of our justice system. These are also opportunities to resolve for better and faster justice delivery. Friends, justice has been given great importance in Indian thoughts. Ancient Indian thinkers say, Nyaya Mulam Swarajyam Syat. It means justice is at the root of independent self-governance. Without justice, even the existence of a nation is not possible. Friends, the theme of this conference is cross-border challenges in justice delivery. In a highly connected 
rapidly changing world this is a very relevant topic sometimes ensuring justice in one country requires working with other countries when we collaborate we can understand each other system better greater understanding brings greater synergy synergy boosts better and faster justice delivery therefore such platforms and conferences are important friends our systems already work with each other in many domains for example air traffic control and maritime traffic similarly we need to expand cooperation to investigation and justice delivery cooperation can happen even while respecting each other's jurisdictions when we work together jurisdiction becomes a tool to deliver justice not delay it friends in recent times the nature and scope of crime have seen radical change criminals have wide networks across various countries and regions they use the latest technology for both funding and operations economic crime crimes in our region are being used to fund activities in other regions the rise of cryptocurrency and cyber threats are posing new challenges 21st century challenges cannot be fought with a 20th century approach there is a need to rethink reimagine and reform this includes modernizing legal systems that deliver justice this includes making our systems more flexible and adaptable friends when we speak of reforms that need to be focus on making justice system more citizen centric ease of justice is a pillar of justice delivery in this space india had many learnings to share in 2014 the people of india blessed me with responsibility of becoming the prime minister before that i worked as the chief minister of the state of gujarat back then we decided to set up evening courts this help people attend court hearing after their work hours this give justice but also save time and money hundreds of thousands of people benefited from this friends india also has a unique concept of lok adalat it means people's court this court provide a mechanism to settlement of a small cases related to public utility services this is a pre litigation process such courts have resolved thousands of cases and ensured easy justice delivery discussions on such initiative could be of a great value across the world friends legal edu education is a key instrument in boosting justice delivery education is where both passion and professional competence are introduced to young minds worldwide there is a discussion on how to bring more women into every domain the first step to do so is to make each domain including at the educational level when the numbers of women in law schools increases the numbers of women in the legal profession will also increase participants in this conference can exchange ideas 
on how more women can be brought into legal education. Friends, the world needs young legal minds who have diverse exposure. Legal education also needs to adapt to changing times and technologies. A focus on understanding the latest trends in crime, investigation, and evidence would be helpful. Friend, there is a need to help young legal professionals with greater international exposure. Our finest law universities can strengthen exchange programs between countries. For example, India had perceived the world's only university dedicated to forensic science. Students, law faculty, and even judges from various countries can be helped to explore short courses here. Further, there are many international institutions related to justice delivery. Developing countries can work together to get greater representation in them. Our students can also be helped to find inter internship at such institutions. This will enable our legal system to learn from international best practices. Friends, India inherited a legal system from colonial times. But in the last few years, we made a number of reforms to it. For example, India had done away with thousands of obsolete laws for colonial times. Some of these laws had the potential to become tools of harassment of people. This has boosted ease of living and ease of doing business. India is also modernizing laws to reflect the present realities. Now, the three new legislations have replaced more than 100 year old colonial criminal laws. Earlier, the focus was on punishment and penal aspects. Now, the focus is on encouraging justice. <laughs> Therefore, Citizens have a sense of assurance rather than fear. Friends, technology can also have a positive impact on justice system. In the last few years, India has used drones to map places and provide clear property cars to rural people. Disputes reduce, the possibility of litigation reduces, and the justice system load decreases, making it more efficient. Digitization has also helped many courts in India take proceedings online. This has helped people access justice even from far away local sense. India is happy to share its learning in this regard with our countries. We are also keen to learn about similar initiatives in other countries. Friends, every challenge in justice delivery can be addressed. But the journey starts with one shared value. We must share a passion for justice. May this conference strengthen the spirit. Let us build a world where everyone has access to timely justice and none is left behind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Sir, your words will be changed.